Well, my name is Kelly Shore, and I'm doing this story because I've been a transgender activist since I was uh, 16 years old. Um, I actually uh, transitioned in high school in El Paso, Illinois, at El Paso High School, before it was El Paso Gridley High School. My mother was very supportive. Um, I started dressing at age 12, and my two friends dressed me up, and um, from there I just kind of figured I always knew I was a girl, and I always got mistaken for a girl. And I called home to my mother and I said, um, I was supposed to tell you about my sexuality. And she was like, well, either you're, either you're gay or you want to be a girl, and I'm hoping that you want to be a girl. And um, I was like, it was the second one. And she's like, oh, I figured that. So she said, come on home and we'll figure out what we have to do. So from there, we called the um, El Paso High, um, what we call El Paso Community School, and asked them what we should do. And they advised us that we sh should be home taught for my safety. And so she ta home taught me for my eighth grade year. And after eighth grade year, she um, was taken with cancer and she couldn't no longer teach me. So El Paso High School took it upon themselves to make an alternative school inside the high school, which um, was a behavior disorder class. And um, I was put into a class with people that had ADD and learning disabilities and I had no learning disabilities or any kind of ADD. They only put me in the class because I was a transsexual and because they thought I would disrupt the classes. So I had to get an advocate involved, um, which is like a lawyer, but um, because the planner didn't say a boy has to dress as a boy and a girl has to dress as a girl, I was allowed to uh, go to school in full-time classes with all the other students. And it really wasn't the students that were as bad, it was really the uh, faculty and it was the uh, parents that had a problem. The students weren't any kind of, you know, threat to me. The most misconception of what a transsexual is is it's about sex. It's about sexuality. Or it's, and it's really nothing about sexuality because your sexuality has to deal with who you're attracted to. And it's, it's about your gender identity and uh, either if you feel female or male. And anyone that wakes up in the morning know from, that mor from when they wake up that they're what they are. And so when I wake up in the morning, I feel like I'm a woman. There is no kind of like question in my mind that I'm not a woman. Because I didn't even know that I wasn't a girl until I was five years old. And I was in the same bathtub <laughs> as my niece. Um, my, my mother was giving me and my niece a bath. And I had no clue that I wasn't a girl until then. Uh, I noticed that she had something different than what I did. <laughs> I have had hormone therapy for years and um, I've had many surgeries. I've had facial feminization, which is um, FFS. That's the uh, uh, abbreviation for it. And I've had uh, my nose done. I've had my chin done. I've had my jaw done. I've had um, my brow shaped. Um, my eyes widened and lifted. Um, I've had my Adam's apple shaped. I've had uh, a breast augmentation. Um, and then I also plan on going through the full operation in a few years uh, where I will be a full-fledged female on the outside anyways. For me to feel whole and to be, feel completely happy uh, and one with myself, I need to go for the full operation. It's not for everybody though. I started performing on stage when I was 19 and I started performing because I was always um, I, I took 12 years of dance, and I loved dancing. And I think it's my, really, my only outlet to still perform on stage rather than just doing dance recitals. You know, there's just different, different all types of people that come, come to Diesel Night Club. Uh, my fans are all, all types. Um, they usually are really surprised when they find out that I'm uh, a genetic, or genetically a boy. And uh, that's what kind of brings them in, I think, because they come to see me and they want to take pictures with me and, and you know, they want to put it on their MySpace or they want to put it, you know, oh my God, do you see this person? They take it with their cell phones, they send it out to their friends. And some would say that was a mockery and they might be offended by that, but I'm not really offended because I think that even, even in that instance, it opens their minds to a, a different sense of uh, lifestyle. I live my life day to day and I take it day by day and Every day, there was no question in my mind that I'm not a girl, no matter what I was born, no matter how I was born. Um, just think to yourself how you would feel 
if you were born in the wrong body or, you know, for those that say, oh, you're, you're messing with God's body or you're messing with this. Well, when you go get your braces put on, wasn't that in God's perfect view when you got your teeth fixed or when you get contacts or when you get glasses or, you know, any, anything that you have done to make yourself look better? Aren't you messing with God's temple? So I, I think that people that uh, bring Christianity into it is um, usually steering it to their own hate or their own uh, discrimination.